Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. Can you guess what we're talking about today? I'm gonna show you how you can go from this Okay friends, welcome back to my bathroom. You'll have to excuse the hampers in the tub and the boxes. They still haven't moved yet. We have stuff everywhere. So forgive me, but let's do tanning. So if you don't know, I avid self tanner. I remember the old, very orange ones. Lots of tanning mistakes with lots of orange hands over the years. I've tried every lotion and potion and different formulation i tan year round it's totally a personal preference i feel like a lot of people around this time of year start wanting to maybe get a little bit of a glow i am freckled by nature i don't tan easy and self tanner on my skin tone actually kind of helps me lower the contrast if that makes sense between my freckles and my very pale skin i mean if you guys could see how i have a bra on under this how pale i really am look at that mm -hmm. yeah really really pale and no i do not tan <laughs> my stomach year round uh, only when I'm going on vacation. So tanning doesn't have to be hard or complicated. I know a lot of people think it's so time consuming. I do it every three to five days and I can do tanning routine now in less than five minutes. So I'm gonna show you how easy it can be, exactly what I do, what I found to work really good for me. And in fact, I have not changed what I've been using for over a year now. So if I will link the video down below, the last time I did a tanning video, I was testing a whole bunch of self tanners and I'm still using the one that won that one. If you're looking for a new self tanner, I definitely recommend it, but like everything, tan is preference. Your skin will even make a difference and it's just whatever you're going for. So that video will show you some good options for those that are really new to, to tanning and want a really natural, really light tan, just to kind of dip your toe in the water. And then the one I've been using, I feel like is a ride or die. So many people use this one now and it is a favorite for a reason. Okay, so to start, I just took a shower. If you couldn't tell, I never tan without taking a shower first. Um, for one, I always exfoliate in the shower and you don't want to tan on dry flaking skin or anything like that. I also tan my face and my body. So I'm going to show you, I know a lot of people don't tan their face, but if you're wanting to try it, this is what I do as well. So I get in the shower and this is my Holy Grail face exfoliator. If you've never seen me use this, it's the very oddly satisfying product that is really gentle, but it will ball up all that dead skin on your face. I can't live without this. In fact, this is too low for comfort. I need to order a new one, even though I've got another bottle over there. That's how much I love this product. So this is Cure Natural Aqua Gel. I do keep it in the shower because it is kind of messy, but let me just preface this by saying, do not, get in the shower and get wet and then try to use this. This um, formulation will actually like deactivate if your hands are wet, even if they're just damp. Um, if you've touched the water and then you try to use it, you're gonna be like, what are you talking about, Sarah? This stuff doesn't do anything. It has to be dry, drier the better. So what I do is I keep it in the shower and I turn on the shower, but then I don't touch the water um, I literally get in and I stand away from it. I don't get my hands wet, nothing. And then I do one pump on each major part of my face. So forehead, one pump for cheeks, one for nose, chin, and then even down my neck. I'm generous with it. You kind of want to rub it around on each area. Let it start doing its job. Okay. It's going to start breaking down that dead skin. 
and then I go back once I've done my whole face and got it everywhere. I go back to that first area and then I just start rolling it around. I start pushing it around until I can't feel any more dead skin balling up on that area and then I move to the next. Then I can rinse it off and actually get wet for the first time. So I'm asked a lot how I do this in the shower without getting wet and that's how I do it. It works for me. It's a lot easier to clean up than at the sink and using a washcloth 500 million times um, because it will get off that much. So I use this every three days like clockwork and it works really good for my sensitive rosacea skin. Okay, so that is takes care of my face. When it comes to body, I'm gonna show you how I use this even though I feel like it didn't do any justice, but the Derma Surrey is by far the best body exfoliator I've ever used. I don't like to use scrubs, um, mainly because there are a lot of oils are in them usually, and it can actually break up your self tanner over time if you are using a scrub and not getting it completely rinsed off properly and then going in with a self tanner. If you start to get blotchy or kind of patchy, sometimes that's due to the oils on your skin still after a scrub. So I just don't like scrubs in general. I feel like they're a little bit too abrasive. I always miss spots, but something like this is like cure for my body. It will actually ball up the dead skin and I can literally see if I've missed a spot or not. So I'm gonna show you how I use it on both on my arms, but truly you wanna get in the shower and you wanna make sure you have like done the, another part of your routine and you want to do it when your skin is really damp that it has had enough time to soften and then you want to make sure you wring this out and then use it okay guys i just got out of the shower but i wanted to show you how important the derma surrey is so if you can see can you see the difference i did one arm okay so this one i removed my previous self tanner so i'm not blotchy or anything now i'm not really blotchy because I have been exfoliating regularly, but if you don't, this is mainly where you're gonna see like where it starts looking patchy and where you will notice if you have um, the self tanner starting to look. I feel like I have maybe a little bit through here, but for the most part, you can kind of tell the difference in my arms when I exfoliate with that and when I don't. But I wanted to show you guys what it looks like and how amazing this thing is. You want to make sure you do it as one of the last steps in your shower. So like be in the shower, let the steam kind of um, soften your skin for about 10 minutes before you use this. Okay. You want to get it wet and then you want to squeeze out everything out of it. You don't want this drenching and then you're going to exfoliate. Now, hopefully you guys will be able to see. And hopefully my skin's not too dry already. I've used every exfoliator, scrub, mitts. This is one is like magic. It's the only way I can ever feel like I can really get off my excess tanner and get it to look really smooth. So if you're one that gets a little splotchy in areas, um, this will always fix it. And it's super easy to just keep in the shower and do a quick exfoliation. If you find the cure like oddly satisfying, this is like that in a mint version. It does the same thing and it makes all of your dead skin ball up. Before shaving, because it will give you a much smoother shave and then you can use your body wash and rinse off all that dead skin. I'm gonna use this after I've done my face, kind of wash my hair, my skin is nice and soft. This, anywhere I'm gonna be tanning. Um, most definitely the legs, especially after winter. It's amazing how dry that area gets. Um, but then I also use it to take off any residual tanner, especially if it's starting to get that patchy look. If you self tan as much as I do, every once in a while you're gonna have to use this to get off the remainder of the tanner before. So you can tell like I used it really well over here. Like I tend to 
get it collected where I have my melanoma scar. So it like collects right here in my scar and I, I'll have to use that, but I didn't do it on this side. So you can probably tell the difference of how it can remove that residual tanner um, and where it didn't get it as well because I didn't do this side. I will link this below. They even have like a back version, but I've even seen that now Target even carries it. You know it's good if Target has it now. It is my holy grail exfoliator for sure. Once you get off all that dead skin, then you can shave, okay? You don't wanna skip this because if you skip shaving and you tan and then you're like, shoot, I need to shave my legs, this is gonna just take off all your self tanner. In order to get the best, smoothest application of your tanner, you wanna shave first, okay? Don't skip that, but do it after the dermosuri because you will get the closest, best shave ever without getting that dead skin in your actual blades. It's a game changer. Then I like to wash off all that dead skin, right? So if I know I'm gonna be tanning, um, this is my favorite body wash for tanning days um, or even days leading up to tanning. So this one is the Naturium, the Brightener Vitamin C Body Wash. This one is the exfoliating one. It has um, natural fruit enzymes. So it has some AHAs in there that's gonna help break those bonds in between the dead skin and help slough off that dead skin, prepping your skin for a nice tan. So this is my favorite. They have a lot of different kinds, um, but I'd say these are the, this is the one I use to get off all that dead skin and prep my skin for my tan. Okay, so we're out of the shower. We're all clean, exfoliated. Do you lotion? Okay. My personal preference, and I would say my recommendation, is based on your skin type, okay? Know that anywhere you put a self-tanner, uh, the driest parts of your body will absorb more tanner than the non-dry parts. Obviously, that makes sense. It'll soak it up like a sponge. So if you do have dry skin, and I mean like you're, you just notice like you touch your elbows and they're dry, um, those type areas you want to put a lotion. Okay. It doesn't matter what kind, um, I'd say just use a little bit, just enough to hydrate. Um, I rarely, I actually usually never put anything on my elbows cause my elbows aren't super dry, but even if you tan, say you have never tanned before the first time you tan, you will be able to know just by looking at your tan and where it develops and what kind of soaks up that tanner the most, where you might need to put that lotion the next time. So like my hands, for example, some people have really dry knuckles to where they have to like rub lotion in their knuckles so it doesn't absorb too much there and give them orange knuckles. My hands, you'll see in the after, doesn't take tanner. <laughs> it just, it's like, it's like I'm wearing gloves but I'm not, it just, my, my skin here is different than here. Now, granted, I don't really have a whole lot. I'm like full freckled here. Obviously, anywhere you put tanner, everything's going to get darker. Um, it is not true if you read that a certain tanner is not gonna cause your hyperpigmentation to get darker. That's just physically not possible. So if you know the way a self tanner works, it absorbs in the skin, it goes through a chemical reaction in order to change the color of your skin. It can't skip parts. So if you're darker, this is why I have this dark spot right here. Um, I can exfoliate it off, it gets light again. And then as soon as I tan again, guess what? It's going to evenly darken every point of your body. Um, it can't skip dark spots, it's just not scientifically possible with the way a self tanner works. So back to my point was after you tan a few times, just kind of take note on your body, where got too dark, where absorbed too much. For me personally, it's my knees and my feet. <laughs> my entire feet and ankles will get so much darker than my legs, it's ridiculous. So I'd say feet are probably a big one that I would make sure I always lotion around my knees, ankles, and my toes. Um, actually I do my entire and feet. that's what works for me, but you might have elbows, you know, just think of dry points and lotion there. Otherwise I do not lotion anywhere else. If I am tanning, 
Okay, so if you are using a lotion, cat hair be flying. If you are using a lotion, you gotta understand this is creating a barrier and less of whatever your tanning product might be, less of it will absorb and actually create a tan. It will lighten your tan greatly if you are putting something in between the two. Okay. I do not lotion on tanning days except for maybe those key areas if I'm tanning my legs and my feet. Which is why I really like the tanner I use because it doesn't dry me out. A lot of formulations might be overly drying for your skin type. So again, it can depend on your skin and you might have to adjust. Now, if you are super, super dry, you might prefer something like a drop that you mix with a lotion because then you're gonna hydrate at the same time. So there are a lot, like um, I know Tanlux has some really great lotion type tanners. Um, I personally prefer the mousse, which I will show you. It works best for me, but know that there's other options if you try a mousse and you're too dry and you're like, Sarah, I can't not lotion. Now granted, you can always lotion after the fact. So you can put that on, give it a couple hours to start developing, then go ahead and hydrate. You're not gonna get the same hydration as obviously stepping right out of the shower while your skin is still damp, and then putting on a lotion, which obviously will make the lotion um, hydrate, penetrate better, but it can maybe stop you from getting too dry depending on your skin type. Now, I say all that, and the one area of my face that I will not completely skip is my face. I refuse to let my face get dry or flaky or feel tight after exfoliating off all of that dead skin. So what's a girl to do? You guys know me, I've tried it all and I've tried every product I own pretty much and I will still put on skincare right after, but only very specific ones and I won't use anything lotion based. So things that are actually like creamy in texture, um, like that, I won't put it on, but serums and very liquidy type products, I will. So um, I'm obsessed right now with this Centella and this is straight up just like a liquid, meaning things that are gonna really absorb quickly and fast and not gonna create just this like barrier where my tanner can't fully penetrate because you might try it and notice if you use a lotion and then you try to put your tanner on, you will still get a little bit of a tan, but be significantly lighter than if you are going for a darker tan, okay? So if you're new to a tanner, you might like actually putting on a lotion first. So I don't, I'm a seasoned tanner. I know exactly how many drops to get the best tan for me. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put on products that I know are gonna absorb really quick. And maybe within 10 minutes, I can come in and put my tanner on. So I used, I used right when I stepped out of the shower when my skin was still damp, I went ahead and I used my Centella, which is pure liquidy. And then I did use a serum. Um, this is the Glow Serum by Beauty of Josian really like this one right now. And then I kind of lock that in with my snail, okay? And I find if I use this, it will kind of lock in my moisture where I'm not gonna get dry and flaky all of a sudden. But this, I know will absorb quickly and then it's not gonna create a thick enough barrier that my tan won't go through it. This is probably about as thick as I will go. So as long as it will fully absorb, not take too long depending on how much time you have before you wanna tan. I do like to shower tan in the mornings and this whole routine is actually pretty quick. The shower obviously takes me longer than even the tanning does, but when by the time I go and fill up my water for the day, this is absorbed and I can go ahead and start my tanning process. That's, it. That's how I kind of prep. After the shower, I do this every about three to five days. So totally personal preference. If you go head to feet or feet to head, I do tan my face. So I always start with my face and then I work down on my body. Okay, so I, again, I I think I've already packed it, but I used to use the Isle of Paradise. Yes, I did, I packed it. The Isle of Paradise drops, they're in the green bottle. I use those for years. 
Um, and I truly feel like they work really well. Um, but I got a sample of this and I tried it and I just feel like it lasts a little bit longer on my face since I am an avid exfoliator. Now that doesn't mean any tanner is going to last for a week if you exfoliate your face every couple days. Um, but usually after I use my cure, I know I'm going to have to tan again. Um, this is my real skin tone, which probably looks darker in here than it does in natural light. But I love the tan lux, the face drops, okay? They have a face and the body. I'll be honest, the drops are the only thing I like on my face. It doesn't break me out. I can mix it with whatever I want. Um, and so if I am, say, exfoliating a lot more, I occasionally will even just mix in a couple of drops with my nighttime moisturizer. I know a moisturizer like this is going to be very thick. Um, and so I'm not going to get much of a tan with something like this, but say I want to wake up with a little bit more color than I'm going to bed with, then at the very last step, I will put this on. Um, granted, again, if you're doing it in your nighttime routine, you got to think it's going to have to go through all the products you're putting on your face at night. I do most of my skincare at night since nighttime is when your skin will regenerate the most. So I like to tan during the day. And so I like to kind of immediately get a little bit of glow. So I'm going to show you how I do that with one big caveat. Okay. So don't judge me, but this is what I do. I have tested every lotion I have. I don't like you. They say you can mix this with a serum. I don't like it with a serum. I don't feel like it mixes well. Um, like I've tried mixing it with all of these things that I just showed you and it's just not my favorite. But with lotion-based products, I do really like it. But like I just said, the thicker the lotion, the more it's not gonna give all that color and so it's gonna be more subtle. My favorite thing to mix it with, I don't recommend unless you are going to reapply later. Okay. And I just, I think it's because the color and the formulation is my favorite. Okay. And that is my glow screen. Now my caveat here is anytime you mix anything with a sunscreen, it no longer is going to give you that SPF rating. In fact, diluting it and changing it. Okay. So I am not going to tell you to mix this and then go about your day and that you're fully protected because you technically aren't, okay? So anytime you mix anything with your sunscreen. The only time I ever mix sunscreens are if I mix these two, which are two different colors, okay? But when I use this method and I, and I want like an immediate glow, I will use the dark glow screen, okay? Which gives me that bronzy look because it has that dark, it has that dark color to it and it will give me that immediate tan because these aren't immediate, right? So that'll take a few hours to develop. But what I do is I will stay at home before I go out. I will put another layer once that has dried and started to develop, okay? Then I'll go in with just my normal glow screen, which is the lighter color, the, what's it called? Champagne Sunrise? I, I think I made that up. Anyway, the lighter one, um, and sometimes I do mix the darker one and I'll put a little bit of the lighter one. So that's the light color. And then I will use my drops. Okay. So I want to make it very clear. I don't recommend mixing a tanner with your SPF, but there's something about the way these go on my skin. I love the way it looks right after the fact, and I'll show you. So one, two, three, four, five is what I use for a dark tan. Okay. So I'm going to try to show you guys what this will look like once it's fully developed. This is the medium dark. Okay. Now I've got all this and now I'm going to mix well, and I'm just using this on my face and try not to get it on my white towel. Okay. I do face and neck.
Okay, so the lightest parts of me, which is around my mouth. And then I go all the way up and behind my ears. So that's an easier place to miss. even on my eyelids as I hit things. <laughs> and then on up into the hairline. Now, if you're a blonde, I'm sorry, I don't have great advice because I hear that it can color your hair if you're not careful. I actually just dyed my hair this morning, so I was looking even pastier because I did also tint in my brows. And when I do that without my tan, I look really pale. Okay, and since you mix that in your hand, now you have to wash your hands very well or you will have orange palms. So if you're like, Sarah, that's crazy. I'm not gonna come back and put more sunscreen on later. Um, the best way to ever apply sunscreen is in thin layers anyway. So I feel like eh, I got one layer, two is just gonna make a better protection if I'm gonna go out into the sun or even if I'm staying home. Um, or I can go in with another form of sunscreen over it. Um, if I'm not gonna be wearing makeup, I will apply maybe a different one. But that glow, it's the instantaneous glow for me. I feel like it evened out my skin tone, even though it hasn't even started developing yet. So because I like a little bronzer in my self tanners, this one isn't an instant color. I mean, it's a little dark, but the glow screen, the golden hour, is the one that's the bronzy one. That's what's giving me that instant bronzer effect. If you don't wanna go through adding more later, I would say just stick with a cream that's hydrating. Um, so when I don't have time to do that, and I know I'm gonna be leaving the house, I will apply something like this. But here's the thing, if I'm self tanning, and I'm using a cream like this. This one will cause it not to develop as dark on me, but this is the best one I've found for my skin because it's not super thick and it will absorb quickly. So this is the good science and I have used it with whichever one I'm needing for the day. This is the hydrating. Sometimes I'll use the brightening and then also the firming. And just depending on which one I'm like, okay, my skin needs a little help in that area. I'll use that one, but I still have to use that. And then I have to wait a little bit and then apply my sunscreen because I use sunscreen every single day, no matter what, after that bad boy. So no matter what, that's why I'm like, well, I like the instant glow. Um, and I feel like I'm almost getting like layered protection, even though I know it is lessening the SPF. So just wanna make that really clear, start coming at me and saying, you can't mix stuff with SPF. Um, you can if you put on more afterwards, get better coverage. I mentioned earlier, you can't skip areas when it comes to the chemical process of a self tanner is gonna tan every area equally. But that doesn't mean if you have a dark spot like I do, you can't strategically go in and take off that tanner because it's too hard to completely miss a spot, but that doesn't mean you can't take off after. Okay, so if you have any dark spots that you're like, I really don't need that getting any darker, and you understand the reality that a self tanner will make everything darker no matter what their marketing might say it's marketing they're trying to sell it to you um you can't it can't physically skip spots okay so you can take it off though so i can just do this and i'll be honest sometimes i'm too lazy to even do that but i'm telling you it makes a big difference just take a little micellar water and remove it where you don't want your hyperpigmentation getting even dark body tools um for your face i don't like using um, i have used the little hand mitt or the finger mitt but i feel like a mousse absorbs so much more into my face that it turns me too dark 
So I like being able to control the amount I use of this and getting exactly what I want. I don't like using a dropper on my body because I have to use my hands and then I have to wash my hands. And then how do you do the back of your hands? Like there's no way to wash it. You can't put on gloves and then tan your hands, right? Just doesn't make any sense. So for me, a mousse is my favorite. Coco and Eve is my ride or die. Um, I've been using this and I've tried all the different colors as well. Um, but dark is what I use on a daily basis. I was using medium in the winter. I use dark in the summer. I have also tried ultra dark, but I'll be honest, um, when it comes to a self tanner, the lighter you are and the darker you try to skip to, the more patchy and uneven your application will be. It's just kind of the nature of tanners. Um, when it's going from this really light color to this really dark color, and then it starts wearing off, it looks a lot less natural. So, although my legs are super white and I want them to match the rest of my body, um, I can't use an ultra dark there or it looks really bad. Like it doesn't, it doesn't go on well, it looks splotchy, it wears off really fast. And so I've learned that I have to still use that dark there. Um, and if I want it to get darker, it's called, you're gonna have to build up and reapply. And so you might have to do it one day and then rinse it off, do it again um, until you get to the color you want. So something like that, I'll be honest, I don't do unless I'm on vacation. I don't tan my legs unless they're gonna be shown, unless it's short season. Um, I am a trunk tanner, so you'll see from here, my arms and up is all I normally tan, unless it's a special occasion. I'm a little lazy like that. But the mousse is by far my favorite. It goes on the smoothest. It doesn't look streaky. It is so easy. Now, if you try to do the mousse with something like your hands, you're gonna have issues. The key with the mousse is a microfiber mitt. And if you've never had one of these, this is a game changer. So I don't recommend a mousse at all without this. Like, I don't even know how I could physically do it and get it to look even half as good without this. So I like this one because it doesn't slide off my hand. Um, it's got this elastic. This is my second one. The first one lasted me years. What it is, is it has inside it has this plastic, so it obviously protects your hands. Um, I didn't notice until I was like, why is my hand partially brown? And this because this plastic inside on my last one started cracking, and so it was soaking through and getting my hand dyed. So, um, but they last a really long time, even with me using them every few days. This is a non-negotiable, and if you don't have a husband that will do your back like me, this bad guy. Okay, so I'll show you how to use it, but it's pretty much, this is the back applicator. Same thing, it's that microfiber. Um, I also got this on Amazon, of course, but you pretty much do it like you're drying your back. Is that what this motion is? Not that I dry my back like this, but I literally will pump it in the, on my back and I haven't tanned my back in a while. You can see how light it is, you see that? Again, this is not something I do unless it is tank top season. So you just shimmy and then I'll switch. And then I'll do the same side because it absorbs on there. Whoops, don't get it twisted, don't do that. And then I'll shimmy it all the way down my back. It is a game changer. You don't have to put any weird things on a stick or anything like that. This is so much easier. You can wash them in your regular washing machine when they get gross, um, you don't have to after every application or anything like that, but you can. And then a brush. So this is just like, I'm sure you can just use a regular Kabuki brush. This one is from Tenacious. So it is meant for tanning, but it is nice and dense. And I will say, if you have troubles with your feet or your hands like me, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna use this on my hands. This is a game changer for my feet personally that always look funky but this like if i try to use a mitt on my feet it, it never comes out right but this can control it and this is a game changer so 
hard areas like knuckles, hands, um, and feet is what I'd recommend this. You can also use this for your face. So I know some people like to contour with a, with a tanner. I personally do not. Again, it's a personal preference, but you would use a brush or something like this. So you don't have to dirty your good makeup brush. So I got my head done. I already washed my hands. So now I can fully tan the rest of my body because I don't have to wash my hands again. So this is why I kind of go in this order, but let's go ahead and talk application. Okay, I always start with my dominant hand, <laughs> makes it easier. Um, and then I'm gonna go in with my, my mousse. If you're new, you might do half as many pumps as I do, um, but I know this is what works for me and the color I'm using because I've used it a very long time. When I talk about a pump, I'm talking about one full pump, meaning from fully extended all the way down and all the way up, okay? So some people like to kind of distribute it on their mitt first by doing that. I usually don't, but I always do one pump and I do my back of my neck here and then down. And I know I used my tanning drops on my neck, but for some reason, my neck is always naturally a little bit lighter, probably because I have, I don't have a lot of freckles on my neck like I do with the rest of my body and my face. So use your hands for leverage. I always reach as far as I possibly can and I stop at the jawline. Okay, so hopefully that will kind of even out. Um, even though it's got a little bit more of a barrier, but I used a full pump just on that area. So you just kind of want to break down your body in sections, okay? So now I'm just gonna do a half a pump, okay? And I like to do the shoulder, okay? So I'm gonna start on this side and I'm gonna reach as far back as I can and I'm gonna bring it all the way to my chest. Okay, so this half a pump, and then I can go and try to reach back here. Now I'm still gonna use, but you can kind of see on my shoulder blades, that's why the middle of my back is not dark. It's because I've just been using this method and I have not used the back tanner because I've not really shown my back. It's not warm here yet, but it actually is 60 today. So maybe I will tan my back. Okay, so all you have to do, small circular motions. You will literally be able to see it because this has a built-in bronzer. You can tell it instantly gives color, okay? And that is what I like about that glow screen as well. I like something that's gonna have an instant bronze. You can see where you put it. You can see if there's a spot not rubbed in and you're also gonna get a little bit of immediate satisfaction and it's just gonna get darker as it's developing. Oh yeah, and this one does not smell like a tanner like they used to 20 years ago. It smells like coconuts, which is one of my favorite scents. So if you don't like coconuts, you might not like this one, but this one does dry so fast, I can immediately go get dressed and it will develop in two hours. And it also says, let develop overnight for a deeper tan. I never rinse this off in the same day. Just a heads up, I always sleep in it. I, I have white sheets and I never um, ever have any tanner transfer to my sheets. Now I will put on a black shirt after this just because a white shirt, if you're gonna put on white and then you sweat in any way um, or it gets wet in any way, then I notice it's the bronzer that's in this will transfer. So as long as I've given it overnight, I'm good, but just know that don't put on like your best white shirt after you do your tanner. Well, now I'm gonna go in for my arm. Okay, so my arms, I always do two pumps. You always just don't wanna go directly into dry spots. So I never would take an area that would absorb too much product and like take my pump and go straight to my elbow or anything like that. You wanna to go to the areas where you want the darkest. So naturally, obviously, this part of our arm gets more sun over time because that's the part of our arms that are exposed um, and not the underside. So I usually will get hit this 
on this part of my arm first, and then I will take the residual under my arms because then it looks more natural. So I am going to do two pumps. Okay. I hit the tops. Okay. And I start working that in on both. Okay. I'm not even touching my elbow yet. Okay. Now I'm going to start going under and I even do my armpit. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to do under and then under here. Okay. And then lastly, this area, which kind of can collect. And then I'm going to kind of just gradually take that excess across my elbow and that's it. Now here's the part where I like to go up and go ahead and hit my wrist and my hands. I'll show you how I use the brush, but if I'm a day, I'm not worried too much. I just go to my hands I bend my fingers because otherwise when you go like this, you will see if you, if you bend, <laughs> I can bend my, bend my thumb, you'll see like, if you don't bend your thumb, you'll have, when you do this, then you'll have like white in between your knuckles. So I bend my knuckles and then I go in between my fingers. And then I just pull that excess down my hand and my wrist. Okay. So just remember, hit the darkest parts first where you want the most tan, then move that around to the lighter areas and where you want it to absorb the least amount. You don't want your hands or your wrists darker than the rest of your arms. Okay. Now I'm going to switch and repeat on the other side. And it's like, that is already dry. You don't even have to worry about like touching yourself. You're already dry on that arm and you literally just did it. That's how fast drying it is, which is critical for me. Um, one thing though, I will always note is don't tan and then just go do the dishes or give your kids a bath. I've made that mistake so many times. And when water drips down your arm, it will show, <laughs> it will ruin your tan. So quick heads up. So I do like to take it there and I sometimes will bend my mitt, you'll see, and I use the backside, which is dry, which has not been used to kind of blur and make sure I don't have any harsh lines. So you can always use your tools to your advantage as well. Okay. Or a lot of times since I just showered, I always have my towel, make sure it's a dark one. <laughs> I always do. Um, and areas that are still damp, I also sometimes will use that for areas of my body that I want to kind of blur. Make sure it doesn't develop wonky or weird there, kind of blend those areas, remove excess. So I will straight up take damp part of my towel and I can feel it and just kind of rub it on there. If you have dry elbows, then you can go ahead and do that. I always do this around my knees and ankles since those are major problem areas for me. I don't think I can actually do my back while wearing a towel or a bra. <laughs> so I'll have to do that off camera. But I usually do two pumps on my back and then I'll shimmy all the way. If I am doing my full body on my stomach, I'll do a couple. Dark, I want it. Sometimes I'll just do one on the front, one on the lower back. Um, and then four pumps on each leg. So two on the lower half of the leg, two on the upper thigh. And then when it comes to feet, after they're moisturized and I've let that moisturizer fully soak in while my face stuff was soaking in, then I'll be ready for my feet. And so then I will usually take like the tiniest little pump, um, for my feet, maybe a, like a quarter to a half pump. Um, I just put a very little I'm out on there because I'm going to show you guys my hands. Okay. So if you're going to use a kabuki brush, you'll see it will immediately darken since this has bronzer in it. Let's see if I can actually get my hands to tan guys. Hey, I'm not promising that this will actually darken my hands, 
because my hands just do not develop for some reason. Now you wanna be careful because obviously the palm of your hand will absorb more. This area is different, very different skin and it will absorb the product the most. So avoid that and just kind of hit, again, knuckles in between the fingers because you do this and then you see the white fingers. Sometimes that's very obvious. Again, it depends on how much this is actually gonna develop. I can feel like this feels pretty dry to me. I feel like most of the product went probably right to the back of my hand but I just wanna make sure it's fully blended. Maybe I'll just do one hand and see if you can even tell a difference by tomorrow. Okay, so that's pretty much my entire tanning routine. Um, people always ask me, how do you maintain it? And I will say, if you hydrate your body and use a lotion daily, then it's going to keep that much longer. So I really like like really good moisturizers overnight. Or if you feel like you are getting very, I never know how to describe it, but it's when a tanner just starts kind of getting kind of dotted. You know what I mean? Uh, definitely patchy, but when it starts looking like that, either sometimes it means that you didn't exfoliate before you tanned or you need to use something with like AHAs in it. Um, so I do still really love this glow recipe, watermelon glow, pink dream body cream. Um, this does have AHAs in it, so it's gonna naturally kind of exfoliate and help speed up that skin cell turnover. Then you can exfoliate off with your mitt in the shower and get a nice clean, clean canvas. But if you are moisturizing daily, that dotted looking patchy is usually due to your dry skin coming off and leaving behind patches of color, patches of, you know, bare skin where you just lost some dead skin and a moisturizer can really extend that to see less of it and if you are exfoliating regularly in the shower before you're tanning you shouldn't see a problem and those are areas that i never really see that on my upper body but in winter if i try to tan my legs because i haven't been exfoliating them every time i shower um that's when I see it and it is so annoying. Maintaining the face. Again, if you're gonna do like a full exfoliation, like cure or even like shaving your face, you're gonna have to tan afterwards. There's no really way to like maintain that tan if you're taking off that top layer of skin. So if you're using just like a normal like serum or exfoliating acid, you'll notice after a couple days, your tan will be lighter because it, it is getting off that dead skin in a much slower process. That's another reason why I like the drops because if I'm doing my skincare at night, I'm like, dang, I look pasty, I wanna have a tan in the morning, I'll just mix in a couple drops. You might have to change your nightly routine that night. Um, maybe you don't use a thick overnight moisturizer. Um, maybe you use one of these thinner ones and mix it together and that's like your full routine or then you top it with this after an hour or so and that's been absorbed then you can put on more skincare but just know everything that goes under your tanner will affect the way your tanner develops okay also, i know some people even like to use like a spray um in order to kind of maintain and so they'll like do a spray at night or in the morning kind of to refresh their tan. Uh, I find them hard to um, control because sometimes they will hit certain parts of my face more than others. If you don't know, I'm kind of a control freak. I like being able to control the exact amount um, and you really need to do something like that in your shower and if you have like light colored rugs or something like that so you don't over time stain things. Right, there you go. I think I've covered everything. I'm sure I probably forgot something. So if you guys have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment box below. And I will link my video where I tested, I don't even know, 13 or something. I can't remember the number, the number of tanners I tested and comparing the colors and the undertones and all of that. This one does come out with a green undertone called green gray base. It's more olivey, but from somebody that does not does no olive skin tone, it gives a really beautiful golden color and it's not orange at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my back and I will take 
after pictures tomorrow so you can see what it looks like when it's developed. And of course, I will always link everything down in the Dropbox below the video in the caption, everything I mentioned. I hope that was helpful. Don't be scared of self tanner. It is literally one of the best inventions ever and has come such a long way since it was first introduced in the beauty industry. I'm telling you, the technology is so cool and it is just getting better every year. So I will continue to test stuff, of course, because there's always new favorites to be found. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Love you.